Hello and welcome everyone. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, welcome to my first podcast. If you're watching by video, this would be the first interview I've ever uh, given on camera. And the um, point of this particular series, which I hope will continue and be fruitful, uh, will be dissecting a friend of mine's music. We're going to go song by song through really just anything and everything. Uh, this particular subject is of great importance, bringing awareness to uh, the environment. Um, and as a, which I've always been interested in because I live in the environment as we all do, and uh, as a member of a Slow Food North Louisiana chapter, um, the environment means a lot because because you know I want to eat good, clean, fair food. And uh, just a little bit about myself, I've uh, lived in Shreveport, lived in Louisiana my whole life, lived in Shreveport. About 38 and a half years. I'm uh, chilling here in my childhood home right now. I am um, a jack of all trades, a master of none, former yard man, uh, focusing now more on IT, um, doing some content creation. I've done it off and on my whole life. Uh, not my whole life, but maybe since the uh, D digitally in this world in the early thousands but anyways uh, I'm a maker of many many different things I love making stuff uh, I've got a woodworking shop I do some woodworking stuff as you can see um, make uh, spice blends smoke spices salt lotion paracord items a little bit of light leather working some metal working like when I built the brew stand that you can see here which I did win an award for a brown ale and my all grain recipe. Um, uh, fisherman, former hunter, don't really get invited to hunt, but I'd love to shoot some rabbits, running dogs, or um, deer in a stand, or running dogs, never done that. Uh, duck hunting, fantastic. Someone invite me. <laughs> but, uh, but anyways, back, uh, that's pretty much all you really might need to know about me for now we'll get back to focus on the gentleman that I'll introduce here in a moment who is a great friend of mine um, I met him through my best friend at the fourth grade and remained my best friend for a very long time uh, his son Gabe, his son Gabe Marshall uh, after hanging out for a while with Gabe over there on the 100 block of uh, Albert his dad basically said he had adopted me and that I was his second son, which I thought was really cool. Uh, later in life, I would come to have many different second mothers, well, three or four, but then only one really second dad, if you will. And uh, this guy means a lot to me. His music means a lot to me. It has always brought me great joy. It's all I've, I've always really loved it. I like to describe it as... Uh, like uh, f folk rock, um, it's got influence a little bit of uh, country. It's just uh, a personal twist on it. it well, a descriptive word. It's hippy dippy, fantastic, or at least definitely some of the songs are. You'll um, be interested in finding those. Eventually, you'll be able to find his music on the website www www.timmarshall.com and uh, if you ever wanted to contact me for any reason I do act as a consultant on many different subjects if you don't actually need hands on work and you can email me at crafted318 at gmail.com anyways um, we're going to go ahead and get into the bulk of this interview I uh, hope you enjoy it and I hope you come back and God bless you have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'd like to take a moment and give Angie White one minute to give us a pitch for Slow Food. She is the chairwoman of the North Louisiana chapter. Angie, thank you for your time, and please take it away. 
Hi, my name is Angie White with Slow Food North Louisiana, and I'm here to tell you about Slow Food and our love of Mother Earth, or Terra Madre as we call her. Slow Food is an international food movement born in Italy in the 1980s as a protest to the opening of the first McDonald's in Rome. An Italian journalist named Carlo Petrini was incensed that Italy grows and produces such wonderful food made from real food, and yet there was no public celebration of that. So he created one, Slow Food. Think of it as the opposite of fast food. Slow Food North Louisiana has an amazing cross-section of members, from chefs to farmers, home growers to home cooks, to people who just simply care about food and want to be with others who do too. Over its many years of existence, the Slow Food Movement has coalesced around the mission of supporting foodways that are good, clean, and fair. And that is what our chapter strives to do in the events we plan, the partners we work with, and the resources we share with our members. The integral connection of plate and planet is critical for slow food. If our earth is not healthy, if our soil is not healthy, if our people are not given diversity in the foods available to them, we will all suffer. To learn more, visit slowfoodusa.org. here in uh, the Regis building, downtown Shreveport. It's uh, January the 9th, 2023. I am with uh, local native artist, legend, geology man, pinball enthusiast, and friend, uh, Tim Marshall. And we're, um, we're talking about one particular song that we really love. I really love it, and I think it's really awesome. Uh, it's called We Do, and it came from his first album, uh, The 29th Dream. And um, what we'll do here is, um, well, first of all, tell me just the just the basics. Like, okay, did the melody come first, the lyrics? Like, first of all, thanks for getting all the personal labels right and in order. That was pretty good. Uh, anyway, uh, very quickly, The 29th Dream uh, was an album I wrote, first album that I recorded, and it was all original material. The 29th Dream meant it had been 29 years of writing music, and my dream was to put them onto a CD to get them out of my head so I wouldn't be responsible for it anymore, and I could play it forever, and anyone could listen to it. So that's what that represented. And in the artwork, there is a chalice in every picture, and that is part of the dream of each song mm -hmm. and it's in every photo except the end of the album the back, back album cover has no chalice that means the cd had been recorded the dream had been done and that's what the 29th dream represents so one of the songs on the album that you're talking about that we're reviewing today it's called the 29th is called we do which was written in the late 80s 87 88 I wrote it and two other songs for Earth Day that year, and the band that I had at the time, The Sediments, uh, uh, we were going to re play live at an Earth Day ceremony, so I wrote these three songs, one of which was We Do, the other was Save the World, and the other one was Fade Away, which is on uh, separate recordings, but the 29th Dream had We Do, and it's about a two minute and 36 second song, and I uh, just always loved it, and uh, um, it it was uh, pretty easy to record. It's uh, complex and it's in production and somewhat, but uh, it was a lot of fun to do, and uh, uh, it means a lot to me. It's it's a, a, a melody that will stick in your head. And, yes, it does. Yes. Uh, it was recorded uh, primarily with a Leo Kopke 12-string guitar and multiple voices and Joe Osborne and famous uh, bass player for the Wrecking Crew, and Darren, his son, is playing drums, and uh, there are a few other players on I can't come to mind, but it's it's pretty a, a pretty simple recording, as in number of pieces. There's a lot of uh, uh, vocal pads and answering vocals on the song, but it's all in within two minutes and 36 seconds, so it was meant to be a little circular song that's just it, fun it, to listen it, to. It is short and sweet. And for me, it gives me very happy feelings. Um, I kind of get the prancing through the woods and the forest and the. Well, and, and the, I'll, I'll never meadows. forget who played with me the day that we played it at the ceremony. It was uh, Charlie Bush, good friend of mine. 
and we hadn't done the ceremony yet, but I uh, showed him the song a few days before. And I remember him tell, calling me one night and he said, I cannot get this out of my head. Thank you wow. very much. That's awesome. Yeah. It's like so, the best compliment. Yeah, it was. It, and it felt good. I'll never forget yeah. that. Wow. Yeah. It was a very good feeling. So what we're going to do uh, real quick, I'm just going to uh, read the lyrics, uh, kind of like poem style, not put any in inflection in my voice or whatever and um and then we'll we'll pick out a few lyrics we'll talk about it and uh and then we'll go from there all right so do you need the sun air to play and run food to talk and think water clean to drink we do do you want clear rain over fields of grain timber in the woods Home for neighbors. Hoods. Hoods, sorry. I'm not, I forgot that. Home for neighborhoods, yeah. It doesn't rhyme with the Of course, we do. Now the time is fading fast to return to nature's past. And this world we so love will soon be unheard of. Please take the time and open your mind. Mother Earth, she's in need. And she cries as she bleeds. <clears throat> and is this the uh, this is the chorus, right? Uh -huh. It's underneath it. Okay. If you want life, then choose life now. In every little thing you see. In every little thing that you do. In every little thing you want. Want to. In every little thing you need. In every little thing you do. We we do. Yeah. I only paused there because he had uh, some lyrics that were in parentheses. And, and that's I didn't know that's the that's notes. a vocal pad answering the the lead singer. He's asking, "Do you?" It's an every little thing. Gotcha. Yeah. That's the other voice that we're gonna hear yeah. that y'all will hear when yeah. we then when we play this. So right. yeah, I, I wasn't quite prepped. I should have. And I listened to it a lot. And I'm just you know looking at it on paper. Yeah, yeah. it's it's hard I, to. Uh, to determine what's actually happening. Well, right, I mean, I could probably right. sing this much better than actually read this from this paper. We might try that one day. Oh, no, I mean, we should totally <laughs> sing together. Okay. I, I want to do me and more of a show, but I don't want to, uh, like, I want to uh, do it at the Elks uh, Lodge, but uh, we're going to focus on we okay. do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, we just might do. So, <laughs> I mean, this is... Any, anyway, I'll say one other thing. The melody came first. I had the longest time for the melody, and I thought I'd write the song about my, my two sons, uh, and that's what the song was meant at first to be about, and it never came out as my two sons, uh, Ryder and Gabe, and that's what the progression made me think of, and then I had this notion, because I knew we were playing for this Green Day concert, mm. and I just came up with... Uh, I don't know, it's like the let it be, we do, just very simple, uh, undeniable what it means that we, that everyone is giving permission to everyone else and themselves to do it. We do. Uh, yeah, no, I, well, I love it's it. It's affirmation. Well, you want to hear something hilarious? What? That, like, because this is actually my first time. There's so many of your lyrics I haven't, I haven't actually looked at on paper. And so, and I know you know how this goes, like, you could hear a song over and over again. Well, maybe I'm extra special. I'm extra special. <laughs> okay, he knows this too. But um, if I don't know exactly what a word is, I'm more focused when I'm singing it on just getting the tone. I will just make up my own word. Yeah. So in this part, in this particular part, where it's do you want clear rain, over fields of grain, timber in the woods, home for neighborhoods. You want to hear something hilarious? What? In my head, I was hearing like, like nether nether woods or something i thought it was some kind of creature i was picturing iceland in some weird forest I like in some mystical we creature. could subtitle it <laughs> <laughs> who da, who da, who da. Yeah, i didn't know what it was supposed to be i was like what's a nether what's a nether wood is it some like i was thought it was like a like i was thinking like that'd be another nether lyrics you know it. nether is kind of um dark world yes it is kind of a world on top of a world so yeah. that's why i was thinking it was some kind of in the nether woods there are these you know like, don't destroy their habitat, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, huh? Uh, yeah, it is. It's sublime. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, cool. neighborhoods is better because 
Well, actual but people need places that's, to that's live. That's another way of writing some lyrics. I just throw something out that, like Plain Jane, and you hear something strange, and you put a little bit of a twist. Uh, yeah, a twist to it. That's interesting. Yeah. Just like Concrete Store. <laughs> I love it, right? Which is ever after a single he just recorded, y'all. All right, so um, what... And, and if you want the lyrics, you you can look at them. But I mean, like, what's what, what's your favorite part? What do you think is the most like impactful? I'll, I'll just uh, the the particular the line or the, uh, the uh, affirmation by the group itself, the vocal group saying "We do," and just just that, and the way it's sustained, and also what's I, my favorite part of the recording is the long sustain at the end, which must be. I haven't counted the measures, but it's four we to six. We do. Yeah, it's, it's like it's four to six measures of a sustained yeah. note yeah. with very little vibrato, and I've always been proud of that. Cause it it uh, uh, made me feel good to know that I could sing it and sustain a note that long. Well, hey, look, I was jamming singing a lot of your stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, I'm smaller. I have smaller lungs. I've done some bad things to them, and I was really <laughs> giving it a go. I could feel my blood pressure going up my head, my head getting red, getting a little flush. And I mean, it's hard for me to try to keep up. With I'm not sure if I could do it today, but you know, we'd have to listen to it. It's at it's at the very end. That's well, where I it just, ends the song. I, I wish I was a better singer because I can I almost have that uh, stamina or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, for me, if I was to answer the question I just asked you, like, yeah. what do I think the most yeah. impactful is? I love the the Mother Earth. She's in need. She cries as she bleeds. Right. Yeah, I right. mean, you know, unfortunately, she doesn't just bleed red blood out in our streets. Right. Because right. uh, at least that's organic, right? Right. It's, what, <laughs> it's kind of a statement, like, whether you know it or not. Yeah. It, she is bleeding. I mean, yeah, yeah. But, it, you know, it. Because it, it, we don't see what we do. I mean, we do, but we, we ignore it, right? We do. Yeah, good job. <laughs> good job. I mean, I, I could actually, I'm not that much. I mean, I took environmental law in college. I don't know if you knew that about me. I'm not sure. I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, because I was, a, I was a, a, a wildlife conservation major for all of, you know, nine months. Well, what's interesting Two is the, the, the song wasn't wasn't written yesterday. They're written, well, you know, thirty six mm -hmm. years ago. Well, you were ahead of the curve. Well, and it was still a, it was still of concern. It was it was of concern in the late eighties. It was of concern when I grew up in the late sixties. It was of concern. Well, I mean, some of the some of the biggest and worst um, mass pollutions and poisoning like the uh we have the uh instance of chernobyl the, well not uh, just chernobyl i mean look you know in order when 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 i think it's dupont or whatever i don't want to get sued here but uh mm -hmm. the, with the teflon i think it was dupont and, and yeah. there's that, and that that is it it's dupont and the teflon when they won some money okay they got everyone on this first class action lawsuit when they won some money they did something they retained the rights to resue them over something you know to like sue them again and they were get they were able to get enough of a majority which i think was almost everybody to agree to forfeit their whatever like two thousand dollars and they used all of that money to do the largest epi do you know this story mm -mm. to you to do the largest epidemiology epidemiology study that's ever been done to this date okay so they there's a chemical that says don't put it in the water it got a bunch of women. They had birth defects and other stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they were dumping it directly in the water. There's a guy that lost a bunch of neighboring property. He lost cows and cattle. Um, he ended up dying of cancer. And he got a lawsuit, but it's it's all sealed, disclosed. Like, no one really knows how much. Wow. But these people gave their initial lawsuit when they wanted what class action. They all enough of them agreed, which I think was almost 100%, gave this meager sum. Maybe it wasn't even $1,000. Yeah. Because so many people were getting sick and dying. And they gave it and said... Here. let's hire real scientists special people and th it had gone in the water system and it bioaccumulates it does not leave your body once it gets in there 
wow. a substance they use to make Teflon. So that, you know, you can, you, instead of using cast iron, I like cast iron, right? I mean, it's not so bad for the earth, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, yeah, I love cast iron. Right, right. And I didn't mean to go so about this. We're going to talk more about music. But yeah. my point is, um, and I can always edit this out if you yeah. don't like it. Right. Because it's going on. But anyways, DuPont, um, the epidemiological study went on for like four years. And they could not, they actually started testing people all over the world and they couldn't find them without it. So they didn't really have a case because they couldn't find a control. They ended up getting the control because they contacted the U.S. government and they had blood from before when the chemical had been synthesized. Because when they take, when soldiers went in to the service, they were taking blood and they were saving it in cold storage. Wow. And so that's where they ended up finding the blood. They had tested literally thousands of people all over the world. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Mm. Mm. All right, well, on that sad note, okay, because that's, yeah, look, there's a documentary on YouTube about it, that, and I have a pretty good memory, so... Anyone wants to fact check me, uh, you just go Google the DuPont, um, du DuPont uh, Teflon uh, documentary. Uh, but what we'll do now is we'll get into a much happier mood. Okay. Right? Why not? Yes. Let's and do. The reason why, let's do. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, such a necessary to have this awareness. So we're going to go ahead and play the song. And what I'll do is I'll just leave this rolling and edit okay. out. Okay. Short, I sweet. enjoyed the, the thing <laughs> personally. Well, I mean, look, if there was a camera set up in my house, you would think that the money that you you would you would feel like you got a lot more value uh, out of the money that you spent into 29th Dream. That's exactly right. I would have known I'm I've not trying a lot to, more. I'm not trying to plant any ideas when you're at my house. 
Songs will not be discounted. Don't worry. <laughs> no, I just mean planting the camera okay. To, okay. to watch me sing, uh, you know, Twenty Ninth <laughs> Dream. Now that I, now that I have the what is it? Uh, almost thirty speakers and three thousand watts from either end of the house. I'd like to come hear that. You need to come hear that. All right. Yeah. So, um, so when we were listening together, uh, one thing you said was. Uh, your favorite part. So, are you saying your? Were you saying your favorite part musically is the flute? Yeah, uh, Daryl Mims, a fantastic player in town, is really a better guitar player, but he he played flute as well, and he was a jazz player more so, blues, jazz, more jazz on flute, and he had a hard time uh, feeling the groove on it or the key or the melody and such, and I would hum like, try this, try this, and. Needless to say, uh, at the end of the day, he did fan uh, beautiful sustaining notes at the end. I mean, he yeah. he just killed it, and it, and no one could have done it any better. And he did it in, in less, than, it probably took an hour to add his part. And wow. that that's not bad for a studio time. No, that you know, sounds, to to that listen sounds, to it, yeah. to try it a few times, and, and then to nail it. And that's a solo flute, so uh, there's nothing else done to it. And I think we should mention real quick the studio. It is called uh, Sandbox. Sandbox Studio. And Darren Osborne is the owner, the uh, drummer, the producer of that album, and uh, the recording engineer. And his dad, Joe Osborne, right, is now not no longer with us, but he's fa world famous, right. great guy, famous world player, uh, bass player, and uh, a gem of a man. And uh, he's on bass. So, uh, there, Ron Lynn is a guitar player who mastered the album in Tennessee. He's playing on that oh, one as well. Really? Yeah. Um, trying to think who else. That's really all I can think of right now. There, uh, those are the main players: the flute, bass, and then the electric guitar, and then me on twelve, and uh, pretty much me and all the voices and such. And that that is, uh, uh, you know, all that we're gonna ever talk about in the the process of recording the most fun time in the studio is having a lead vocal sung and i get to sing harmony to it and stack harmonies to it that's the most well, fun you, look, time, time you, hold on, but you love stacking harmonies right? yeah time stands still matter of fact time evaporates when i do that and uh it's gone wow and i i don't regret it i just want more of it right it, it never lasts long enough. It's it's only 5% of the whole song, but it, it's a part of the song and the time and it goes, see, it's the magic. That was an interesting sound. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I could have added a ding to it, but I didn't. Um, so, you know, this is, I was talking with Tim the other day and it's, it's probably a total fantasy, but I was thinking like, how cool would it be if, you know, for Earth Day one year, we could get national recognition, regional recognition, or God forbid, global recognition. Like, I was thinking like, you know, and I still am. I just have always, I've always dreamed big. And I know Tim dreams big too. I was like, how cool would this be if like, you know, when they're doing the climate summit, yeah. like 2020, yeah. that like, you know, this was like somewhere playing, you know. It's definitely accessible. I, I mean, I'd love to hear, hear the Japanese, oh, don't, oh, wait, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> you know, or just some Swedish, oh, 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 you know, whatever. I, I'm you know, not trying to make fun of that, but no, it'd be no, kind no, of no. neat, you know, to uh, hear it and, uh, or hear someone else sing it besides me, it's someone else play it, uh, to be a standard, to be accessible. And it, that's the reason why you and I are talking, because it is an accessible melody, accessible words, easy to understand. And the blunt force of it is the getting permission from yourself and the world to do something. Yeah, we we commit. We do. That's that's what the gist. That's why the song is called "We Do." It's work. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's too bad we didn't do more sooner. Not too late. It's not, but I mean, it is looking pretty rough in some departments. In some departments, it's like true. when I was talking about that, that was a seventy-page USGS uh, where they had. I mean, and I read and I read nanoplastics in two thousand and three, and they went from like nine thousand feet to like six inches, and they found nowhere. And you know, when those fish go down there, and 
they eat that, or we're well, not eating fish. I mean, it goes with the small organism shrimp. Yeah. And it just goes up, up, up the food right. chain. Yeah. And you know, and it's not, it's no bueno. I mean, I'm sure some of you guys have heard about that. We may consume, I can't remember if it's yearly or monthly, some people more than a credit card worth of nanoplastic. They actually, there's there's videos where I've seen where they're going into people's veins and and then filtering out nanoplastic, and it's it's a lot. I try to eat cold cash. Okay, so it's the timber. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's, more it's, got, it's got fiber. <laughs> it's a lot better than plastic. Well, just so you know, they say that it's some the, ink tastes different than other ink. The the I can't remember what they're saying that that they had maybe two or three groups of people in that particular with the nanoplastics in the body that wow. came out. Uh, it was getting attention just last summer. Uh, yeah, twenty twenty two June That's July scary. June July. Yeah, and that what they were saying is they they looked at two or three different groups of people and they were saying that that. Those that um, ate out and drank from plastic water bottles always, always came up almost fifty to sixty percent more of what they were isolating. Wow! The nanoplastics out of the blood. Wow! Yeah, I mean, it, it's there's some pretty gruesome stuff that it almost looks fake, but if there wasn't a giant, I'm pretty sure it is a clinical study. Wow! Yes, this is not just what it's an actual clinical study. Mm. So. I mean, it's so bad, and I've been hearing about this for the long time. And as an IT guy, and a guy that's been into technology for a very long time, this is potentially very scary to me on multiple levels. We have this nanoplastic, the life in the ocean floor, according to the fossil records, and you can speak to this because the guy knows, he knows how things work to a degree. But um, what I've heard is, as far as when they look through the fossil records, they analyze the period of time when they try to analyze basically um, where we've been, even like 50, 60 years back to today, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the Gulf, but all over the oceans. It's the lowest, it's the lowest amount of life in the oceans. Throughout. Really? Yeah, just trying to compare it to fossil records, and I don't know how exactly you, you try to extrapolate, yeah, I'm, I'm, extrapolate that, you know, from there. Um, well, I mean, certainly uh, it's, you know, uh, recorded in the recent sediments. There, there's going to be some profile that's going to uh, fit up a certain model that's going to reveal certain kinds of life and activity and, and uh, maybe cause and effect of why it is that way. I, I'm not as familiar with that, but there's no doubt, you know, each year, you know, the lake bed gets another slight little mm -hmm. thin veneer. And another one, another one, just like uh, tree rings, you know, each year is, shows a... It's an uh, interesting uh, analogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it can't be denied, uh, the growth of a, of a tree, it, mm -hmm. it's, you can read it like a book. And so, so as you can, uh, sedimentary rock and uh, some that's 60 million years old and some that are just recent as 60 years old, there's a story to... The Earth is telling a continual story. There's no doubt, and uh, it's our uh, chance, and uh, hopefully, our ability to be able to read that scientifically, truthfully, as for what it really is. And then, well, re read it truthfully, but then present it truthfully. Well, sure, yeah, to everybody, because we know that that that, that is not always the case. I mean, the the the, the fact is, um, if you could treat it like. Present it as a light because light does not lie. I mean, you could distort the light, but a light itself, a candle, you know, the truth of, of what you actually see, the frequency, the everything about it. Yeah, yeah, all in all, if, uh, if you get the whole story, you get the whole story. Well, two little bits that I want to add just talking about the environment. Because um, um, I, I mean, I am not, I, I try to not litter and do it, but you know, I don't consider myself too much but i i definitely have been trying to do my part right and it's really sad just on a more local note here that we don't have a recycling anymore like like right. i hope tom Mars, you know i don't know how that's gonna but that's that is literally ridiculous granted there's so much i've um i volunteered a lot of events where in, in fact it was like three different things to recycle and this was in denver and i was even told by multiple people that live there it all goes the same place 
Yeah. Why are they even separating here? Right. You know, they didn't try to separate our stuff, but we had a facility that now, what, it had like the, the did the paper, you familiar? Right. Yeah. That, you know, I don't know, what, what are they are they paying to get their paper products? I mean, at least they were doing our paper here. I, I cannot fathom. Okay. Look, I had this thought today. Okay. I'm not for the government ruling and regulating every aspect of life. I want, I am a very freedom mindset. But what I can't figure out is if, you know, say there are common sizes in things that you buy, in products, right? You know, maybe, maybe we're talking a half ounce, an ounce, two ounce, four ounce. Like, why can't there be common sizes that are made common? It makes labeling easier so that everything can just be washed and it'd be just a little more generic for the bottles and then put yeah. and reused. I mean, that's what people used to do. People, you know, that stuff used to be washed and reused. And now you look at stuff that, you know, let me ask you this. Have you ever, because I've paid attention, have you ever picked up a bottle where they actually printed from back in the day, the, the places, the states where it's recyclable at on the glass and ever seen one that even said Louisiana? Mm, I don't. I can't say that, but I do remember those being uh, mm -hmm. impressed on on the uh, containers and such. There's no doubt. I, they know. still do them on the label. I'm very familiar with them because I was a bottle collector, and so back in the day, it was actually a ra it was raised lettering, right? Which is you know, right. So that's the only reason I I kind of paid attention to that. Yeah, um, and and it, it uh, a lot of the. Uh, green environment, the, the politics of it, the push, the drive and the energy behind it, uh, a lot of it is supposedly based on morals and ethics. And uh, that may be the case, but there are other factions of our life that we totally disavow those moral and ethics. And, you know... Uh, it's like picking and choosing. And... Well, I mean, there's certain things in this society that are really, truly bad for you that we totally allow that we totally tax, you know, gambling. You know, what good would public gambling do anyone? It does no one good, it raises taxes, but is that moral and ethical uh, uh, to, for government to support that, for people to support that? No, not really, and that's an easy answer, but we allow it. Well, the same thing relative to that, to the green world, is that uh, if you tout obeying green law because of your moral attitude and your ethics that you hold them apply that to every part of your life and that's really how you're going to come about for any kind of success in a green way is to apply it to your whole life don't uh, don't just pick and choose it's got to be you cannot pick and choose yeah. i mean i i um one of the things because uh, i was a member of slow foods international organization right you know, gotten to hear a lot and meet a lot of people and it was really cool and one of the things that I started doing that, that uh, Anthony Bourdain actually uh, has a documentary on it it's called Wasted I remembered something it's called yeah. Wasted and it's fantastic and it's all and there are some countries that when you go out to your street there is a box to put your food leftovers so when you think about Especially since, and I'm not trying to get political here, but so much of our um, fertilizer for the world, it has it comes through, it comes from Ukraine, and that has been disrupted. And food costs are whoosh, okay. Mm -hmm. Fertilizer is expensive, right? And it's a thing that we need. But I mean, when you you can fertilize naturally by not just taking your yeah. organic food waste and putting it in trash can, and it goes to a dump, and that those minerals you'll never unless you know we basically get to the point technology wise where we're ready to leave the planet there's no way that you can you'll be able to economically commercially isolate that with all the garbage that's going to break down all the lead acid batteries the uh, you know plastic oil products all the stuff that's going to leach in that area i mean so all your your zinc your calcium yeah uh your i mean carbon your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and all and phosphates. You know, I started naming the trace elements first, but I mean, mm -hmm. plants are mostly what you know, 
hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, carbon nitrogen. I mean, mm-hmm. look, you can basically look at the composition of the of the atmosphere yeah. and say, you know, after that it's trace element, but you know, we need it all, uh, especially some of those trace elements. So, but the the other thing that I want to talk about, I'd really love to get your opinion. I didn't want mean to go so much on it, and we can always talk about more of yeah. the music and stop this whenever you want. But uh, I wrote a paper in um, second year of college. A technical, I took technical writing, uh, and I think, yeah, it was in the second year. And uh, it, I, my granddad and I, he was like my hero. He was an engineer and he was very smart. But um, we would always talk about alternate uh, energy sources. Right. Right, not, you know, we'll never, in my opinion, we'll never get off of oil and gas and gas done, especially gas done properly. It's yeah. so, it's so clean. Very good. Okay. But um, when I looked at geothermal, solar, um, wind, wind, which, which actually got ruled out really quick on a large scale, I looked at... Um, um, there's wave action, there's hydro... Yeah, there's, there's wave action... There's hot and, and there's hydro and there's hydroelectric, which is great because those those are really cool. But I mean, we have got we've changed too much of the waterways on the planet at this point. Yeah. There's over 700 dams worldwide, I think, or more than that. No, it's thousands. Someone look it up, please. Out there, it's a, it's a lot, uh, which has changed. You know, really uh, how everything moves. Smaller hydroelectric can be done right there because, or, or it's a good thing because, and I've watched this recently. You know, when energy usage goes up really quick, say you have a heat wave, Mm -hmm. you know, places where sometimes the water gets diverted or stored, it it basically acts as a battery. Right. So when they got to turn that on, it's like there are all these other smaller dams that got to turn that on. It's like, boom, here's this electricity. Hey, guys, now you got electricity. And that's why, you know, we are lucky. We're blessed to live here in the United States. India's got roving blackouts. I've got people, I've got friends, uh, uh, did a game with and still talk to even if I'm game with them and uh in South Africa and they all have generators and they wow. oh yeah and they don't they'll, they'll burn their generator uh sometimes four to six hours every day wow just to keep up yep but well because they because they have scheduled blackout periods ah yes in order the grid the grid can't yeah, handle to maintain it. yeah the, the wow. grid can't handle it and they have to divert they have to divert the power but anyways without being too long-winded the technology. Oh, and I also looked at um, um, uh, cells. What do you call them? Uh, um, hydrogen. No, uh, well, yeah, hydrogen. Hydrogen yeah. cell. Hydrogen cell is a type of a cell. It. You know. Uh, you give it water. I also um, looked into. Uh, they have bio cells where essentially mm-hmm. with, within a fusion cell, you actually have a culture and an organism, and it actually produces energy. Or, yeah. or byproducts that can be isolated within a system and become energy and become electricity. I mean, they had a car in uh, 2002 that that ran off. They had fuel cell te- fuel cell technology, and out of its muffler, it dripped a little bit of pure H2O. Wow! Wow! Yeah, and you know, uh, if you could harness there ten thousand wells, uh, there are more than that, but just for a number that uh, that go. Uh, that are at 10,000 feet underground where the ambient temperature is 280 degrees. And if or you could start, certain, uh, well, whatever, yeah. but what is the, the, whatever cause and effect from temperature to transfer that into electricity, that can be harnessed, and it can be harnessed. It can be. being studied right now. It's, it's going to happen. But there is a eternal source of energy at 10,000 feet with the ambient temperature is it exists at 207 degrees, whatever, plus or minus, and that's always there. So there are, there will be, and there are uh, different approaches that are going to be used, and that's one one example right there. You can't you, you can't put that out? You know, it, it's an ex, it's, it exists in uh, uh, circulating waters. Uh, from the depth and re-inject in those same waters, they just reheat again. Mm. And that energy transfer uh, to electricity, it's maybe not efficient yet, but it will be. I read something that, well, I'm not going to get that. I want to, because I want to stay on what the line of yeah. thought. So I, the one, the alternate energy that I went with in my paper, I haven't actually mentioned. 
So I don't know if you remember all that I said. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try to guess at what it might be, or should I just say? Just say. Okay, so it's called um, it's called methane hydrate, and they say that that might be what's up with the Bugarita Triangle, right? So like, from my understanding, like you know, we're always moving on these plates and things shift, and there's apparently there's trillions of cubic. Uh, I don't know if it was. I was actually trying to think of that one because I read about that in the uh, uh, mid oceanic ridges. Yes. At depth. Yes, where the, where it's coming, where the, yeah, it's it, doing this basically. It's ever ever being yeah. pro, uh, produced. Produced, and so it, and so what happens? Which what you have uh, on a chemical level is you have, um, you can get uh, benzanes, uh, propanes. Uh, what's your propane? Your um, but it's it's water. I want to say it's yeah. six. It's you get you get six water molecules around different flammable gases, and when they're actually below the um, when they're at a certain pressure, and essentially, un, from my understanding, underground, mm -hmm. like not exposed to other water, what happens is they form a, it forms a, a six bond ionic crystal of water, water, water in dead center. Yeah, I cannot think of the word that because I know exactly what. Well, it's called methane hydrate. You have, uh, a, you have. I mean, well, that's the big one. That's the one yeah. that's really common. Like I said, you have, you have uh, all your other different types of off flammable gases that you would get in a well. Heavier ones, essentially, can also end up in the middle yeah. of this of this thing. So what's cool is that's what I what I went with um, because it's already there, and a lot of times it does get released, and that is the whole thing that when it gets released. In fact, that's why. Offshore on the rigs, that's one of the reasons you have all the alarms. Because sometimes when they're drilling, if you drill into this, a layer of this stuff, what happens is you disturb the soil and now water comes to rush in, and the regular ionic bond between water coming and hitting this mm -hmm. structure instantly pulls and breaks it apart. And so the methane just floats up free in gas. Yeah. So they think that a lot of the ships and even planes that have gone down is because there was shifting. And it just naturally opened up a giant crevice, which created a, a an, an air differential. In fact, in boats, there's videos of it, and it's just bubbles all around you. It would be like think about if you were floating on water, which is you know, a substance not as the molecules aren't as solid as a stable, and there's you know, but it not as you know, air is very very thin, and this is you know, water's your in between. But think about if you have that in between thing, and then here just comes air. It's just taking material, and you're a boat, like, on top of this thing. I mean, you just go, like this. Wow. And then waves just come over if it's a big enough pocket. There you go. Wow. Never yeah. thought about that one. I would, there's some very cool videos out there. But um, the one thing that I, I wanted to talk about, just a, a tad bit, it's a really cool substance. Y'all can look it up. It's um, It almost looks like snow. Have you ever seen that? Methane hydrate? Uh, no, I pictures. Think so. There's some videos, so it would be cool to look up, um, and I might link some stuff on this. But it looks kind of like snow. It's very hard to get because, like I said, once it touches water, that's it. It's going to its gas form. The water's becoming water. It's going to its gas form, which is amazing because here's what happens when you can actually find a pocket and and, and mine this stuff. Um, it, it looks like it's because it's very difficult. There's yeah. so many. There's yeah. so many. There's so many factors into trying to get it. It's heavy, you know, without like pressure behind it or whatever. But it looks like snow, and there's videos online. Y'all, it's the coolest thing. There's someone putting the stuff that looks like snow, and you just put a lighter to it and you light it, and that initial bit of heat will break the water bond, and it will literally burn slow and clean. You know, it's just it's clean, as clean as as, as wow. natural gas burns. But guess what? Your bride product is. I mean, water. It's pure water. So I mean, imagine, yeah, bottom, the, imagine yeah. if you can get yeah. that in the industrial applications of having a source of pure H2O and heat at the same time. Yeah. I cannot think of the top subject that I'm really trying to think of. Because oh. I've, I've read about it you know, in the geological book and such. Uh, and that is a future definite future energy source. I, I wanted to make it my career but I, it was it was so breaking and new that like there was no one in the world doing it I mean this was I wrote this in uh, 2002 
You know, I mean, I've been reading popular science, popular mechanics, and wow. talking about alternate energies with my grandfather since I was 12 years old. And, but the one thing that I did want to mention that, that I find really interesting, when I was doing all my research for the technical paper, every source said that methane, loose in the air, is a four times greater greenhouse gas than CO2. The new science has a range between 7 and 11. But here's the thing, you know, so they're collecting the cow farts. But we have trillions of metric tons. Mm -hmm. Now, this, this, this process of the mid-Atlantic drift, this has been going as long as this Earth, correct? Yeah, right, right. So, I mean, barring the, the synthesized things that we put into it, I mean, wouldn't you say that these natural things in the Earth, they have a way, if they do get out of hand and it makes temperature go one way or another, and I don't want to get too deep in a debate like that, but yeah. that, that, that nature is going to have a way to balance itself out. I mean, look at the no doubt. Yeah, I mean, look There's at the no Jurassic doubt. period. There's no doubt. Just really quick, as a, from a geologist standpoint, do you think there was more CO2 in the air in the Jurassic or less? Uh, I, I'm not really sure. I, I don't know the actual measurements, well, except that, that uh, if you study weather patterns and you go back to fossil records and don't take anything out of context, and you study it in whole, that there were... Uh, just as there were different ice ages, there were different periods uh, every hundred million years where you had gra uh, curves off the graph uh, uh, during uh, Sorry, gigantic you... growth of, a, of a, a forest uh, and then being reduced to uh, very little growth and then uh, tremendous more growth in different other parts of the world and in life and that uh, uh, I mean, there's no doubt that, uh, uh, in my mind, that we can affect to some degree, but not to an effective degree, to change the homeostatic uh, mm -hmm. virtue of, of, of yes. the environment. Yes, and that that has been, you know, out there a lot. I mean, I'll, to, I mean, to well, put matter it, of fact, to put it another way, yes, please. in my mind, what what controls our environment more than anything else is that orange ball in the sky. Thank you. And how many, how many recent scientists have actually, like, no, there's some, there's some equations when trying to deal where they took out I'm just, solar. No, let's yeah, be honest. They yeah. took out solar cycles. Uh, what do you call it when it's at its uh, maximum? No, yeah, just when yeah, it, yeah. you have the more, yeah. the, you know, I can't remember. There's a, there's a, they have different phases where it kind of goes dormant and then it's shooting off right. a, lot of, yeah. a lot of energy. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, solar activity, period. Right, right. And so there's nothing that we can do to control the sun, okay? There's nothing that we can do to control the magnetosphere because the movie Core, okay, is... is so, We're slaves it's, to gravity, whether you believe it or not. <laughs> we, well, yeah, <laughs> gravity does not just hold us here. It's all you can do. It's Star, it's Star Wars for our planet with shields, or we would all fry up like yeah. that, y'all. When you fall, you get up. That's the only thing you can do with gravity. <laughs> all right, Jamie, I all enjoyed right, it very let's, much. Let's cut this off. Anything else you want to say about the music? No, oh, I can't wait for the next one. Call's done. Another home. Oh, my God. All, all right, right. You. take your call. Thank you. It's been awesome. Hey.